In this lecture about linked lists, we'll explore one of the simplest kinds of linked lists, which has a head only. Later on, we'll take a look at the case where you have linked lists with both head and tail. In this linked list, our intent is to store a number of string objects. Here are the string objects that we will be inserting. At the moment, none of them are in place. But what I have done is actually built the first object, that is, the list object. When you're dealing with linked lists, there are always two layers to the linked list. One is the list, which is, in a sense, the manager. And then you have a whole series of nodes, or often called list nodes. Each individual list node will store one object. Well, I have five string objects that I intend to manage, so ultimately I will end up with five list node objects, but at the moment there are none. And that's why in the beginning I have a null value here as an indicator that, nope, there aren't any list nodes yet. Well, let's begin by adding the first of the strings, atoms. When I add that first string, I have to first begin by building the list node object. Notice that Adams isn't there yet. We'll be in a moment. But the node is the manager of a single object. List is the manager of all nodes. A node is a manager of one particular object that's going to be stored. In this case, it'll be Adams. So I'm going to need to be able to capture in here the location information for the object. Here's Adams. Adams is at location 27. In my diagrams of memory maps, when I put a box outside with a number in it, this is the label. This is indicating the address or the location of the object Adams. When I put the 27 in here, this is an indicator that I'm actually storing a numeric value, a reference, and that reference gives me the right to access Adams over here. So I built this first list node, fine, but I haven't yet bound it into the list. I'm going to have to overwrite the value null that's sitting here with the value 17, which represents the location information. And there it is. Time to add the next object. I want to create Jones. There'll be several steps to do this. One, I need to create the list node object bind Jones into that list node object. And as a second step, I need to insert that list node into the list. Well, let's see what happens. First, I build the list node and associate it with Jones. Obviously, the location information there is stored as a numeric value here, and that allows this list node to get access to Jones. But at the moment, this particular node here is sitting out in memory and nobody's managing it. So we do need to capture the location information of this node here, 31. And we're ultimately going to capture it up here. But if I make the mistake of immediately overwriting that 17 with a 31, I'm going to be in trouble because I will lose track of atoms over here. So, here's the step. I first need to copy the value here down to here. That means Jones will be pointing at Adams. Let's see that happen. Great. And all I'm doing is assigning a numeric value, the value 17, from the variable up here down to the variable here. Now that I've copied the value 17, I can overwrite the original value, 17, with the new value, 31. And indeed, that happens. So effectively, my list starts out pointing at Jones. Jones points at Adams. Time to add the next one, Miller. When I bring Miller in, there's the object. Now, what's going to happen? What's going to be written in here? Currently, it's null. Miller needs to point at Jones, so the 31 it needs to capture, but it gets the value 31 from this variable up here. Now that Miller is pointing at Jones, I can overwrite 
that 31 with this new value here, 51. And the list object is now pointing at Miller. Next, we'll get Smith. Smith comes in. Capture the location information for Miller based on copying it out of here. Done. And then overwrite this 51 with the address of Smith. And that means effectively my head is now pointing at Smith. And finally, I ought to add Wilson. The object comes in. Have Wilson point at Smith by capturing the 61. And now have the head point at Wilson by assigning that 63. And we're done. We now have the linked list complete, although one of the things that's interesting, when you're adding at the head, the order in the list is reversed. It's just a natural consequence of the way that we do the addition. In the next lecture, we'll take a look at exactly the same process, but we'll show it using Java code to see how it behaves.